when I'm coaching people, I always get the giggles because when they, I ask them like, what do you think if you had to guess what system is the most broke right now? It's really strange, but a lot of times it's not the me system, which we would think it's like, oh, because we don't take care of ourselves. It's actually the food system uh-huh. because the food system takes up so much mental bandwidth. It's true. You know, you either put it off. You're like, but I don't know what's for supper. I don't know what's for, I don't know what's for supper. Or you're like on a phase where you need to really concentrate on the food and it just gets so overwhelming because it's like this diet, this diet, this diet. Mm-hmm. So we really dive deep into the food system and going, okay, well, what parts of it of the program, maybe you're following a program, do you really want to do what'll be the most profitable? What will give you the best results for your food system? But mostly just making a decision on what your food system is going to be. How to combine motherhood, uh, private life with the success in business, how to be uh, satisfied and not burn ourselves down with a startup we all want to do our own gig but how to thrive rather than uh, survive <laughs> I'm speaking today to Rebecca Scott who's a, an entrepreneur herself a mother she's uh, uh, has so many things you you do a lot of <laughs> fun things Rebecca tell I us think. about it. tell us a bit about you yes um, I'm an author and I'm a coach and I'm a designer I actually design purses and accessories that um oh, cool. so i'm a handcrafted business right here in the united states and i have a genuine leather line as well so i run about three different brands and a team of 20 and i'm constantly being asked the question like how do you do this how do you do both work and home life because i'm also a mother of four wow wow yeah, yeah. Such an impressive person already <laughs> <laughs> Yes, but I don't want it to overwhelm you. Like people are like, well, I don't know how I could possibly do that. I do have like systems in place that are actually really easy and practical to to implement into your own stage, whether it's like one child or no children or three brands or one brand or one startup. Like I have methods that work for all of those. That's impressive. You've been doing this for 15 years now. Um, tell us a bit about the, the, the history of how this all began and uh, did you sure. manage to um, get a, a grip of it all from the very start? How did you develop mm. it also into the coaching and how how did you develop this system? Yeah, well, actually, it was granted a very distinct story of how things were going to change very drastically. In the beginning, my business was about 18 months old and my first son was 18 months old. And I was running in and out of the house to pack for an art show. And that just means like um, like a craft event or a market. And so I was packing all of my stuff and my suitcases and my bins and packing it into the van and running in and out of our farmhouse. And my little son kept asking me for a snack. You know, he kept tugging on my shirt, snack, snack. And I kept saying the infamous mom phrase, like, just a minute, right? Just a minute, just a minute. And by the fourth time he had asked, I was very overwhelmed. I was packing. The email notifications are going off. My text messages are going off. Our phone is literally ringing. I felt overwhelmed and I yelled at the little tiny guy and I yelled at him stop and his to this day I can still see his little eyes well up and he was so confused on why his simple request for a snack and why I was overreacting and so I got down on the floor with him after I got the snack because you know a little toddler doesn't forget their snack got the snack and basically just sobbed and I thought how am I going to do this how am I going to raise him and be the mom that I really want to be but also be the businesswoman that I really wanted to be. And I really felt strong that I could do both. And in the moment, I didn't get the message like, well, I'm going to have to quit the business so that I can raise him first. I got the message like, no, I want to do both. And I want to do both well. And I want to do both with joy. I don't want to suffer through burnout when I barely even started. Mm -hmm. So I ended up calling the show and I canceled it, which is a big deal here. Like they don't invite you back when you cancel. They think you're like a flighty artist or something. But I knew it was the right decision for that moment so that I could figure out how I was going to do both. And so what I started doing is I journaled that entire week. I took a notebook with me everywhere and I journaled everything I was doing and how long everything took. Just two things. Mm-hmm. So I journaled how long it took to sew the purse, how long it took to get snacks how long it took to make supper, how long it took to exercise, how long it took to clean out the dishwasher. I mean, I journaled just everything I did in a week. And then I zoomed out and I looked at this journal and I started finding categories that were in the same area. So I started highlighting like, okay, here's where I'm working and here's where I'm taking care of my son. 
And here's where I'm cooking all the food. And here's where I'm taking care of myself. And here's where I'm emailing. And what I started to see was that there was five systems that emerged or five areas that emerged. And the areas that I think all of us have, and you guys, this is permission too. You don't, you don't have to be a mother for these to apply to you. You don't even have to be a woman for these to apply to you. I think that we all have these five systems, but they're unique to ourselves. So we all have a me system, how we take care of ourselves. That's just like, how do you get a full charge? And everybody's different. Some people it's going for a run. Some people it's going for a nap, (laughs) whatever it might be. But how do you take care of yourself? And the other system I saw in my journaling was the food system, like answering the question, what's for supper? How How am I feeding myself and my family? And then I saw a home system in there that was like, hey, when are you doing the laundry? And when are you cleaning? And where does everybody's shoes go when they get in the house? So I saw a home system in there. And then I saw a family system. And that was like, huh, the values that I wanted to instill in my son. And like asking that my home is a sanctuary of where I come to. And my family was a legacy that I wanted to leave. Am I living what I want to leave behind? And then I saw a work system and that was all the hours that I was working. Like the who, who's going to help me get this work done when I was working? uh, Why, why was I working? Why did I want to do this job? And so those five things, I think all of us have, we have them at different uh, stages and a different volume. Like sometimes your work goal, especially in a startup is super involved. So you got to be really clear with your family and with your me system that like, Hey, I'm going to do some extra hours because I'm just trying to get this thing off the floor, but then also set an end date. And so I think if we zoom out and look at these things, we can also find out which one is the most broke. You know, if you are starting to get burnout, you're like, oh, which one of these is the most chaotic right now? It might be your work system because you're simply like in denial that the 90 hour weeks cannot continue for one full year. Maybe you can do them in six week sprints, but you probably couldn't sustain that for very long. Or maybe you realize like your food system is completely shot and you just need to make a decision if you want to do takeout permission you guys but make the decision like for right now during this season we're going to get frozen food or we're going to have food made for us or or whatever it looks like but just be honest with what the decision is so you can make it and move on to working on some of the other systems Mm -hmm. sounds like a fantastic system and i know that you're also coaching you mentioned you're also coaching women Are they all open to adopt such a structured model because everybody has a different personality and some say, I want to go with the flow. And so how do you deal with that? Yes. Mm -hmm. Um, Well, I just always tell them like the systems are not so that like you do it my way. The systems are that so you recognize what works for you and your family. So if you're like, no, I don't want to be so structured. That's totally fine. But just tell me what the loose structure is for your food system. And tell me what the loose structure is for how you take care of yourself. And they go, oh, okay, that is true. I do have some ways of how I do it. And so it's more of an objective looking looking at it from like, okay, let's be honest about what you got going on right now. Is this the first two or three months of your job? And how many hours a week do you want to work? And okay, like you just had a health scare. I think we probably need to take a look at your me system and how you're taking care of yourself. So it is, yes, it's a structure in place. But it's really fluid because it works for what that person needs because they've made the decisions for themselves. Can you share some transformation of maybe first what happened to you and then what happens to a yeah. client once they adopt this system, the type of transformation you're seeing in your life? Yeah, yeah. So after I journaled for that week with my son, I started implementing these and going, okay, which one needs the most attention? Well, at that time, it really was the work system. I started that, I should say, I started thinking, how do I fill myself up first? Because I didn't feel like I was showing up for him. So I did work on my me system. But then I was like, I got to figure out work because that's the one in the moment that just felt so stressful. And what I realized is I was trying to squeeze work into the when, answering the question, when do I work, into like nap times or late bedtime. So it wasn't, it just wasn't conducive to try and moving it forward. So I got really honest about when was I going to work and what was I going to work on? Because in the toddler stage, they still need me a lot. So I only put efforts towards the things I knew would be profitable. So I actually hired an assistant at that time to start um, ordering the supplies and answering some of my emails so that I could concentrate on the sewing and the design and my son. And so that's how I started implementing them. And then I was like, we got to figure out a food system because I needed to feed everybody. So that's how I personally started working those systems. And I still, after 15 years, I still go back to them. And every system is allowed to change over the different stages. So when I'm coaching them too, it's like, well, what ages are your children? Uh, where is your 
marriage at right now. Um, so we can like make sure that we're lining them up to focus on the system that's the most uh, pertinent at the time. Um, and so some transformational stories is when I'm coaching people, I always get the giggles because when they, I ask them like, what do you think if you had to guess what system is the most broke right now? It's really strange, but a lot of times it's not the me system, which we would think it's like, oh, cause we don't take care of ourselves. It's actually the food system uh-huh. because the food system takes up so much mental bandwidth. It's true. You know, you either put it off. You're like, but I don't know what's for supper. I don't know what's for supper. I don't know what's for supper. Or you're like on a phase where you need to really concentrate on the food and it just gets so overwhelming because it's like this diet, this diet, this diet. Mm-hmm. So we really dive deep into the food system and going, okay, well, what parts of it, of the program, maybe you're following a program, do you really want to do? What will be the most profitable? What will give you the best results for your food system? But mostly just making a decision on what your food system is going to be. And that's going to be different for each one of them. So we kind of coach alongside that. But half the time the food system is broke is because we're just so indecisive. We just need to be decisive. Like, okay, I plan supper by 9 a.m. That's it. That's your plan. Okay, that's great. Okay, I'm actually just going to do the food that comes straight to my door. Okay, great. We've made the decision. Moving on. But indecisiveness in the food system comes up a lot in the coaching. This is so revelational, honestly, because I I can see my story (laughs) through this uh... Uh, transformation that you're talking about and indeed the food system was a great issue when I was raising up my son and also still yes (laughs) Yes, I totally agree and so that one is kind of funny that that one pops up a lot and then also when we work through the work system I have a lot of people that are not deciding when they work Mm -hmm. so we end up burning out because in some cases they worked 90 hours a week and didn't even realize it like Mm -hmm. well no wonder your family system is shot because you're not spending any time at home right or They're only working 20 hours a week, but the demands and the goals that they have are more like 90 hours a week. So it's like working through, when are you going to work and declare like, this is a growth period or nope, I just need to be on idle right now. I just need to kind of figure out some things, but I'll do the things that are the most profitable. So the work system and when they work comes up a lot in coaching. Okay. So so once these are fixed or people start uh, addressing Mm. these systems, what happens then? What happens to their lives? Thankfully, what I aim for every time is a lot of joy because they realize it's it's really possible to do both work and home life and not have to choose between the two of them and not do that goofy like, I'm balancing them because I hate the word balance. So we harmonize the two of them. So a lot of like transformations of like, gosh, I just feel much more joyful when I go to work because I've decided that this is my work time. So I'm not going to feel guilty for not being with my family right now, because this is what I've chosen for my work time. And then when I'm with my family, I'm like, okay, I don't feel guilty about this because I completed the things that I worked out that I needed to do for my work that day. So a lot of joy comes out of like just organizing them and realizing, okay, this is what I set up for myself. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, Rebecca, do you see any change in the types of clients that contact you recently? Because people are moving more and more uh, out of uh, corporate and starting their own business, especially moms. Basically, um, it, it seems that women are choosing to jump out of their corporate career the moment they become moms. This was my case, and this is yes. across the line my observation. So, okay. do you have this observation as well? Mm-hmm. What kind of people mm-hmm. contact yeah. you? Well, I've been working from home for twenty plus years. So, and we were doing it before everybody was doing it. So, I have a lot of people who are like, "Oh my gosh, how do you have kids around you while you're trying to work?" Yeah. And so, yes, there is a lot of that change from like, I don't want to climb this corporate ladder that isn't my own ladder. I want to climb my own thing. So, yes, I have a lot of them come to me. And usually the first thing we start working on, because they are as driven, it depends for everybody, is like, okay, well, let's figure out when you're going to work because we don't want you to feel guilty about the work or you'll burn out. Let's figure out when that's going to happen, why you're doing it, which chances are so that you can be more flexible with your kiddos. And then let's figure out how we're going to do it for you uniquely. Yes. Yeah, so everybody is a little bit different, but I do see a huge swing. And the women that are coming out of the corporate and going, I don't want that. I don't want that pace anymore. I don't want their goals anymore. I want my own goals. And that's where the sweet spot is for me in the coaching. Because I'm like, all right, what are those goals? Let's figure out how we're going to tackle them without burning yourself or your family out. Yeah. Rebecca, show us a bit of your products. I see very beautiful fabrics oh. behind you. Yeah. What do you produce? Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I leather have... earrings. I, I love all that. I... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a genuine leather collection and then I also have a canvas collection. So here are like two traveling cubes. These ones are a little bit funky, but it's kind of fun on the website because there's very colorful things and there's very subtle things. But the unique thing about my website, it's designyourownpurse.com. 
the customer picks out the style. There's 20 different styles. Then you get to pick out the outside fabric and it appears on the purse. And then you pick out the zippers and you pick out the features. And then we get the order. And then my team and I get started making all the cool things that you got to design. So it's interesting that both of my brands, both my purse brand and my coaching brand are very similar in that we custom make things that work for you, mm-hmm. <laughs> not just buying whatever. I guess I would say this um, for the purses. I realize like you like a purse, but you're like, ah, it was really, really affordable, but it's really, really ugly, but at least it's organized or it was really, really expensive and it's name brand, but it's a dump zone. Like there's no organization. So I said to make a purse that's both stylish and you got to pick the elements, but it's also very well organized. We have pockets, zippered pockets. We have all the pockets you can possibly think of in the purses. And my coaching goes the same way. Like, I don't want you to just buy a really expensive coaching program that you can't figure out how it works in your life because it was a man in his sixties who has never had to raise children Uh (laughs) or, or the opposite of that. Like it's a really organized program and you have to do the steps like this. Yeah, But some of the steps are not conducive to you trying to run your home. Mm-hmm. And so our my coaching is very custom to like, what is your motivation? What is your systems? What do you want to prioritize? Because there are some people that they want to prioritize their food system and they love food. So I'm yeah. like, all right, well, it's just like some more time for your food. That's something that brings you joy. Let's make some more time for that. Or it'll be the opposite where they're like, I hate coming home right now. I don't like the way my house is organized. I don't, I don't like that it doesn't flow around work and family. So then we take a real strong look at like, all right, let's make your home life better. So your sanctuary, yeah. if you will, is more conducive to doing the things you love. Mm-hmm. And what is, uh, can you share the, the URLs of these two websites and you have a third business also? Yes. Well, um, the coaching is the encouragerpodcast.com and you can listen to 300 plus podcast episodes where I give all the simple tips in my coaching. Uh, my coaching offers are on there as well. Or you can go to designyourownpurse.com. And that has both my vegan leather brand and also my genuine leather brand, which is 1948 leather. Uh-huh. Can you show us a bit what, what it looks like on the inside, the pockets and all? I can. I can. Let me find the right one. Okay. So look how cute this one is. This yeah, is Millie. You. And this is in Butterscotch. What's really fun about this brand is see the logo right there. Yeah. That's the brand we put on our cows when I was growing up. We farmed and ranched. Wow. So that's the brand of my dad. Here is a fun, this is a laptop bag. And mm-hmm. it's got two pockets up front here. And the inside has the pocket oh, cool. sleeve right here yeah. for your laptop. Yeah. And then on this side, it's got uh, two pen pockets, a coffee pocket. You could put your Kindle in there and then plenty of cavity there. Yeah. And then it also has a pocket on the back side here as well. Love it. So our biggest slogan is we're both stylish and organized. You don't have to choose between the two. Do you ship in the U.S. or also internationally? Yeah, we ship internationally, thankfully. Uh Cool. Cool. Check it out. I like them. (laughs) Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. It's very fun. If you've ever wondered, like, gosh, I wish I could design my own bag. I have so many ideas. I bet I have a style that's very close to what you're thinking. (laughs) Very cool. Rebecca, I love this conversation. It was so inspirational and so relaxing awesome. somehow not, um, yes. um, I don't know, not making me feel guilty. I love that the, the, no. the fact that you're no. moving away from guilt, you know, give space yes. to no. your areas of life. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Love. Just just remind yourself to zoom out mm-hmm. and take a look at those five simple systems and go, okay, which one of these can I work on first? Don't work on all of them at once. Just which one can you make some little progress in? And then you can take on another one. It's just way more relaxing and less overwhelming. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, where are you aiming at at the moment? What is, what is your goal? Or do you just yes. go slow? Well, I'm in a current stage of life. My youngest kiddo is nine that I'm going back into the one I'm on coaching. I also have a digital course. But now I'm like, I want to individually coach women because we're being told nonstop that we have to choose between the two of them, work and home life or just choose daily or just choose weekly. And I don't, I, I've been running it for 20 years. It's not true. You get to choose both and you get to love both. There's no guilt for either party. And so my mission right now is just to encourage women, whether it's one-on-one or through the digital course or through our membership, that we can do both. And we can do both with joy, with way less overwhelm and indecision and other people's ideals of what success is. Fantastic. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. So once again, um, People can find you at, can you share the, the encourager? Yep. The encouragerpodcast.com. 
-hmm. and um, designyourownpurse.com. Anything else that I didn't ask you that you'd love to share? <laughs> yes. One more thing, you guys. If you take anything away from this, I want you to try this practice this next week. Time everything. And you don't have to be a super nerd. You don't have to get a stopwatch. But I just want you to take note of how long your tasks take. You'll be less overwhelmed and you won't find yourself saying, well, I don't know. I don't know how long it's going to take. If you have some data of like, oh, the dishwasher actually only takes four minutes. You'll, you'll complain less, right? Or checking email takes six hours a day. Gross. That's a good one to be like, uh, I think I need some help with my email. Or you're timing out how long it takes you to make supper. Is that the appropriate time? Did you love it? Was it joyful? Or do you want quicker recipes? Then just find quicker recipes. Time your tasks this week and find out. Don't lie about them. Don't lie about how long it takes. But find out if it's working for you. Great advice. Thank you, Rebecca. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, yeah. Thank you. It was a pleasure and very crisp and clear and it made me feel great. So. Good. <laughs> check, check, check. Yeah, check, check, check. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed it, guys, as well. Let us know in the comments.